on the existence of God, we left off with that man is moral, right or wrong. You go back and get the previous audios and videos. We're going to go right into, we're talking about the existence, the existence of God. The man has a heart trouble. An atheist has a heart trouble. God judges by the heart, the motive. They say that there is no God. And in, disbel in disbelief, they speak from, let's go to Psalms chapter 14, verse 1. Get where we were in context. Psalm 14, verse 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The atheist is a fool according to God. What does God say about them? They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. A man that says there's no God says it from his heart. The Bible begins with God. In the beginning, God. I don't believe that. You got a problem. The Word of God takes for granted. It is from God from the beginning to the end as you go to Revelation 22. Well, see, well, you know, we can't go and because I don't believe. And I'm supposed to stop my belief because you don't believe. The whole world is supposed to stop because of your stupidity. Psalms 22, 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. We have, in the beginning, God. We close with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have God as creator, and we have grace. And there are people out there, according to scriptures, that just do not believe. Psalms 118, verse 8. Now, there's some debate on this one. There always is. But some say that Psalm 118, verse 8, is the middle of the Bible. I'm not going to count all the words myself. Whether it be true or not be true. In Psalms 118, verse 8, It is better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in man. Now you break down that verse. And you can't break it down to one word. Because it's even numbers. It comes out to be the Lord. If that is the middle verse of the Bible. You have recorded in the beginning God, the Lord, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture proof is from Genesis, Revelations, and Psalms. My Bible, the King James Bible, takes it for granted that God is, that God exists. And some of you don't believe it. And the Bible says you're a fool. And you're corrupt. And one day you'll stand before the God that, that wrote this Bible, that inspired this Bible. And then what will you say then? Now apart from the scriptures, which scriptures are number one, they are Jesus Christ. I have a daily fellowship as a born-again person. And I know that God 
is real. I can sing, he walks with me, and he talks with me. That's a hymn. I know personally. And I've known it even before April 7th, 1987, that it was a God. April 7th, the day I was saved. Before April 7, 1987, I knew there was a God. I just didn't really understand. And I tried the religion. I tried the works. In April 1987, on, this, on the 21st, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior in my grandmother's living room, accompanied by Joe Caswell, a brother in the Lord who opened up the Bible and showed me the way of salvation. And I know personally, in my personal life, that God has spoken to me through His Word, and only by His Word, has guided me in things that are right, and in the truth, and the life has done things in my life that no one else could do and has spanked me and when I have been wrong has been faithful and true to the words that he has written me there is no shadow of a doubt in my life that there's a God that we walk together A true, born-again, Bible-believing Christian knows there is a God. Well, I know a Christian, uh, and he thought they're not living right. They're not doing right. An atheist cannot sing or know the fellowship. How can you know about God if you say there is no God? And then you try to converse and, and fight with me on what I believe versus what you don't believe. Imagine a, a non-God saying, ask of me for I am not here. That is the atheistic God. Ask of me because I'm not here. Seek me, but I cannot be found. Knock on the door that I cannot answer. And some of you who know your Bible say, wow. Did you distort the scripture? No, that's what an atheist believes. My God has told me, ask and I shall give unto you. Seek me and you shall find. Knock and shall be answered unto you. But an atheist does not have that. It's nonsense. God is who he says, for he says, ask, seek, and knock. An atheist will tell you, no, there is no God. Well, how do you explain no one helping me in my life by seeking, asking, or asking, seeking, and knocking? Well, somebody, no. no. There's been things in my life where nobody could come in and do what was done. Nobody. You never had that happen to you. You don't have that testimony because you are rebelling against the God. God is not going to do anything for you if you don't believe in him. Only an atheist would have a 24-hour prayer line with no one on the other end to answer. In a casket, he's all dressed up with nowhere to go. And I'm not saying that as a joke. I am saying that it's 100% right. 
If there is no God for an atheist, why do you dress yourself up in the cross? I know. I really, listen, we're not going to appear before God and, and, and close it, but why dress you up? Even in a closed casket service, you're enclosed. History. And you got to get this because this is what's disappearing from the churches today. History. I thank God I finally found a pastor that's in history. I don't mean he's old. I mean he gets involved with church history. He looks at what has happened. History records there is a God and he is real. But yet atheists will, there is no God. Do you celebrate Thanksgiving? How many countries out there celebrate Thanksgiving? Do you know what Thanksgiving is? The true Thanksgiving. That came over to America, which wasn't America yet. With the Geneva Bible. And by the providence of God survived a winter hardship. By the providence of God, only by God could they survive. And the fact is, if you were to look and study yourself, history of the rights of this country you have is because of Baptists. Study. Study where the Constitution and the amendments came from. I'll give you a clue. Look, start looking in Virginia. Okay. Now, there is a proof of God, the existence of God through nature. Psalms 19.1. I don't have to show you God. Nature shows God. Psalms 19.1 states, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Looking at the night sky, all those beautiful stars, the planets that you can see, will tell you it didn't happen by accident. Where did it come from? The Big Bang. You mean nothing. Well, no, the Big... See, the Bible says God and takes for granted God has always been. But in order to have a big bang, something had to be there. There was nothing. And scientists say this little tiny little thing has exploded into infinity. There is no end to the, to the universe. As there is no end to God. The heavens declare God that God exists. The heavens cry out, God made me. Or for just for the sake of if you don't believe in God, how about let's agree on an intelligent being? Romans 1.20. It had to take intelligence for what is here today. A friend on Facebook the other day put, you know, that familiar chart, Romans 1.20. You know, the, 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 the ape becoming a man. You know, here's the ape, and, you know, he, he gets a big shaver, he shaves off a few more hair, he stands a little more up. And he shaves off more hair. And here he is standing up. 
Where did woman come from? Where did she come from? When did she start shaving? And why don't those charts show we're going up, 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 and then, oh, my back starts aching, and I start slumping back down and, and, and bending over and show me in a wheelchair. That's reality. But Revelation 1.20 uh, Romans 1.20, the ins invisible things of him. What invisible things? You ever seen oxygen? Hydrogen? Atoms? Neutrons? Protons? The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now I can read the rest, read the rest of that chapter about man in sinful condition. God created it all. Invisible things. Hydrogen is invisible. Oxygen invis is invis yeah. invisible. Take two hydrogens and mix it with an oxygen, and you got water. Now it's visible. Take two hydrogens and two oxygens, and you got hi a, a, a peroxide. You can drink the H2O, but don't drink the H2O2. Okay? Hydrogen is flammable. Oxygen is flammable. Put H2O together and you can put the fire out. But that happened by boom! No intelligent being. Just boom! Now, if you were to go into the darkest area that has not ever seen civilization, that has never seen school, has never seen anything but just their own being, and say, look up there, well, where did that come from? And in their language, they would say, God. Now, it may not be the God of the Bible, but they'll recognize a supreme being. And then you give them a scholarship to go to some college over there, and then they'll come out and say, boom! And deny the Bible. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Where do I get what I'm saying? Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I wasn't there when everything was created. Yes, I am holding my incomplete existence, beings, and my soul on this Bible. And the God that's written in this Bible. That is my faith. As scientists hold to their religion, the Big Bang. Because they never they were not there, they didn't see it just like I didn't see God do it. So you got to acknowledge one thing. As far as me believing in a creator, or as far as you believing in the Big Bang, or what have you, we are both in the realms of religion. My source is God in the Bible. Your source is the Big Bang. And we both equally have faith because we were not there to see it. And my hope is to see the Lord Jesus Christ. And your hope is to see 
I don't know what you just see. I'm not going to say that. I don't know what you're looking for in, in evolution, what your final outcome is. We both have a source. We both have faith, and we both did not see it happen. Now look at verse 6, Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's a pronoun for God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. If I see a man is generally an atheist, I'm not going to go around with him. I'm not going to debate. That's not a Bible thing, debating. I will deal with him and, and try to see if he's really using it as, as a, a excuse or is he just truly an atheist. If he does not believe in God, I, I, there's nothing I can do. I can do two millions of these videos. And if you don't believe in God, you don't believe in God, you don't believe in God, you're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you. There's no hope. Well, what is the hope in these videos? That the Christian will grow and learn. That maybe if you are, I, I'm an atheist, I, I'm, I'm listening. And there's a spark of hope in you. Well, maybe he's telling the truth. That little spark of hope, you're no more an atheist. Now, I, that may have just scared you. There is hope for an atheist. Well, if there's complete denial completely of God, there is no hope. But if I have sparked your interest, but without faith it is impossible to please him, God, for he, that's you, the person, that cometh to God must believe that he, God, is. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You haven't seen God, and now you're like, maybe, I don't know. Atheism is now gone. And he, God, is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That spark is raising your concern as, I don't know. Follow along now. And get to know God. And we'll see where, where you and God will come together. You may not. But the riches of, of the glory is to come to know the Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. To realize that you're a sinner. But I can't do nothing if you don't believe in God. And you will not believe in God. And you won't listen or adhere to God. There's no hope. And there's no sense of emailing me or Facebooking me or whatever and have a fight because I'm not going to go that fight. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to bat my hand against the wall because, no. But if you have a glimpse, you, you, you these videos will will hopefully bring you out and to show or at least one point in your life to say I believe God or I don't believe in God these videos will show you the evidence and for the Christian to grow to get more secure in a God that died for him There's only one that have seen hell. 
I haven't seen hell. God and Jesus and lost angels, souls and bodies have died. It's only one that was at that beginning when all was here. And it wasn't me. But I can tell you one thing. Luke 16, 19. I can tell you one thing according to the Bible now. What I'm telling you, get, is from the Bible. I will tell you what I think. And I will tell you what the Bible says. I will tell you the book, the chapter, and the verse number for you to look it up. And Luke 16, 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fair substantially every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Can you and I come to one conclusion? That everyone will die? Evolution has not stopped death, has it? So we come to another conclusion. Death will happen. Or will you be so bold to say that there will be a time when man will live forever? Stay with these messages. You're right and you're wrong. Patience. And was carried by the angels in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died. Can we come to another conclusion? No matter what your status is on this planet, you're going to die. Can we both say that? Can we come to a 100% acknowledgement of the fact is no matter what, Man will die. Can we come to that agreement? And was buried. You know, we can't be in agreement on that one. We can go to a graveyard and bury bodies. What about those who, who died and perished in the Titanic? Those bodies weren't buried. They probably became fish food. But we can come to the conclusion, can't we, that everyone's going to die. They may not be buried, but they're going to die. Here's a man that was buried. And in hell, do you believe in hell? I do. I believe it's a literal hell. You may not. You may have to continue with these messages. Somewhere down along the line, we're going to talk about hell, Lord willing. But the Bible says there's a hell. Can you agree with me on that? You and I can both agree that there's death. But can we agree that the Bible has written that there's hell? Now, if you, got a, if you don't have a King James Bible, you may have something else there. Can you trust me so far to, to get yourself a King James Bible? You can find them a dollar in a dollar store. A couple bucks at Walmart. Can you at least get a King James Bible for now? The next time we meet. Or the next time you get you hear the video. But can we both agree at least in the King James Bible. Luke 16, 22. Man's died. And 23. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. The Bible says in hell you have your eyeballs. Being in torment. You're tormented in hell. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, In hell you cry. 
and you'll talk. You may not believe it, but can you acknowledge that's what the Bible says? Okay? Father Abraham, have mercy on me. In hell, you will want mercy. Black and right. Unless you've got a red letter version of the Bible. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. And cool my tongue. You have a tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. There's a flame in hell. Now remember I said, can't we agree on that a person will die? There is life after death. This rich man died and went into hell, and he has his eyeballs, he has his tongue, he cries out, and he wants mercy. He's being in torments while being tormented in a flame. Verse 27. Then he, the rich man, said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Now, I, if you're a Bible student, if, if you're a Christian, you're listening to these things, learning. If you're not saved, if you're not, you're not sure. You've gone this far. And reading from the Bible, if you can just take from the facts of what we're reading about hell, an afterlife after man has died, we came to the conclusion that man dies. We bumped it up to that there is a hell. And people go to hell, and they have their eyes, their fingers, and their tongues, and all their body parts. And in hell, this guy is thinking about his family. If you know somebody who's died, and not a Christian... Born again Bible believing Christian. They want you to listen to me. I don't believe it. That's the trouble. But if you're still listening to these videos, if you're still ignoring, there's hope for you. You want something. But let me tell you, as far as getting back to the existence of God. Souls that have gone to hell are Bible believers. You may reject the Bible today. I pray you don't. But if you reject the Bible today, and this be the last video you hear, anybody who goes off into hell is a Bible believer. And if they are a Bible believer, guess what? They will turn to believe in God. But it won't do you no good. The Bible says no matter what, all men will believe in God. Whether you're saved or lost, whether you go to heaven or go to hell, you're going to believe in God. The Bible says that. It is written. It has been testified. It has been lived. Matthew 25, 41. Thank you. 
quote from the wrong source. Matthew 25, 41. Then, he, then shall he, Jesus, God, say unto them at the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed. Cursed. There's a group of people that are cursed. Into everlasting flame. We saw that in Luke 16. Fire. Flame in Luke 6. I mean, the flame in Luke 16 is the fire here. Can we come to the conclusion that a fire is a flame and a flame is a fire? Can we go that far? Are we in disagreeing grounds here? We're not. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Let me close off tonight with saying, God never intended to put man into hell. Never. It is man's rebellion that he ended up there. But God created hell. God is a creator of not everything that's here today, but he's also a creator of hell. God is the creator. The Bible takes for granted God. A book, the Bible, that has been lived and breathed by many souls. You can take what you learn in American schools today and your rejection of God in creation you, you can only take that back as far as the monkey trial do you know that you were taught by the public school system in America there was no God I know it goes back to Darwin and it goes even back before Darwin But I can take you back all the way to where it was there. It was nothing there. And you can take me to back all the way where it was nothing. And I will tell you it's God. And you will tell me it was nothing. Which you call the Big Bang. Now you cannot say God is nothing. And we bring you to creation that God was and made we bring you all the way to death and the afterlife and everything that's invisible invisible Romans chapter 1 we'll move this up with a notch more We just close from the creator of all things. As far as an evolutionist or an atheist, what is your life after death? What is your sole purpose of being here today, right now? To be warm food tomorrow? That's it? That's all you got to offer me? I advise you please stay along with these messages. They're going to go more and more in debt with God. We go further. We're going to go further. And however the Lord, how long the Lord has us to do what we have, what time we got now. Hopefully you stay tuned and keep listening.
Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his return. 